up guys <laughs> i look like a train wreck i am in mother forking bloomington indiana i'm so happy to be home but i'm not gonna lie i'm so tired it's literally 6 15 p.m i have hardly vlogged since this morning i landed this morning at like 6 a.m and you know what's crazy is the indy airport like i pride myself on the indy airport i'm like it is the best airport ever yada 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 they're so fast it's so clean all the things way superior to LAX. Well, I kind of spoke too soon because this morning when we landed, I was I flew American Airlines, which I'm not that fond of, but it's like the only direct flight they have from LAX to Indy at the moment. I mean, Delta has one too, but I don't think they had one last night. Oh, it's more expensive. My mom's in the background being like, so I flew American and then we landed and we were on the, we like had landed and we were just on, what is it called mom? The tar mat? We landed and we were just like sitting on the plane. Yeah, for like ever, which was frustrating. But then when we got off, it had been like 45 minutes. We get off, I see my mom. We go down, normally we get our bags. It's like bang, bang, bang. Mind you, it's like six in the morning indie time. So in LA time, it was like 3 a.m. So I was like forking tired. And the whole plane ride, I forgot to tell you mom, there was a baby crying. I know, I was like, this is the birth control I needed. As if I didn't have like my own already. I was like, oh, this is beat. My mom picked me up which is really nice but we drove home and i was just like it's like an hour drive so that took forever so tired and then i slept and this whole day i've just been like sleeping waking up from my zoom meetings sleeping waking up from my zoom meetings i'm not gonna lie it was like one of those days my dad brought me over some chick-fil-a it was gas and now i am doing more work because it's only 3 p.m west coast time so yeah there's no way i'm like gonna look presentable today in this vlog i'm just uh, i don't care i was on my zooms today like hi guys don't worry i brought the heat on the zooms it's just i didn't bring the looks you know what i mean guys my mom got the same vacuum as me and she's obsessed with it too yeah girl isn't it good it's so good right i stand the dyson yeah. I love that it's wireless. I hate that stupid cord. What drives <laughs> me crazy is the cord. So this is so awesome and it's so light and you just whip it out of the- Do a brand deal for it right now. Ready? So you think you can influence her. Go. No, I can't. What do you mean? Pretend you're an influencer for Dyson. I channel the Taylor King. Okay, do it. Here okay, ready? And five, six, seven, eight. Influencer. <laughs> Guys, you wouldn't believe how amazing this <laughs> Dyson vacuum cleaner is. Shut no up. No cord. No cord. Oh my Dyson. god. No cord. There is nothing hanging out that's like pulling me back. And it's just so easy. <laughs> the tags on it. Dyson, I stand Dyson. Okay, and what's your code? Uh, uh, Kelly8020. Okay, for 20% off. You got it, baby. Yeah. Period. <laughs> Alicia's gonna love that you're wearing that sweatshirt. You've got a lot of vlogmas smiles. Say, shop Alicia Marie. Shop Alicia Marie and parallel apparel. Do you wish Ash and Alicia were here right now? Yes, I do. I need their help. Why? Because I gotta do some cooking. <laughs> you want someone to help you? What's that big bottle of alcohol right there? This is one of the key ingredients for one of my concoctions. What is it? The concoction? Not telling. What do you mean you're not telling? Some type of slush. Naughty slush? Naughty. I'm gonna shower. I feel so much better. <laughs> wow. Life hack. Always, always, always 
shower before and after the plane. It just feels so much better. I wish I would have done it earlier, but I was so bloody tired from the red eye that we're doing it now, but better late than ever. Let me just tell you that. So I'm currently at my mom's and y'all know my parents are like divorced, right? I complain about it a lot. The biggest struggle with divorced parents is like, where do I keep my bags? Where's my home base? And then whose house do I kind of like pack a bag and travel to? And I would say my home base is typically my dad's because that's like the house I grew up in. But lately I've been staying at my mom's just because she like picked me up from the airport. And that's just kind of where I like landed for Thanksgiving because I was spending Thanksgiving with her. So, I mean, I still saw my dad. They live really close anyway. So I'm really grateful for that. But the packing bags is annoying as working shit. Does anyone else who has divorced parents like relate? Yeah, I am going to keep my suitcases hopefully in the car because my home base is gonna be at my dad's house. And then I'm just gonna like borrow my mom's shit until then. So let's pick out a robe. My mom is low key a hoe for a robe. I think I'm gonna go with the fuzzy one. I love this one. Does anyone else share or steal clothes from their mom? Cause I never had a sister growing up. I mean, I still don't, but I still to this day steal her shit. How do I get this off? Hold on. And luckily I give her a lot of like extra PR that I have. So she has a lot of the products that I use. Do you have a toothbrush I can use? Can I ever give you one? I think so, but I'm like, where did I put it? Thanks mom. She found my toothbrush. Let's go! The lighting in. Okay, not me saying that and me looking like a ghost. What the fork cannon. Fun fact about me, I literally have to brush my teeth like five times a day. Like, I don't know what it is. It makes me feel clean and like put together. And then when I'm stressed out, I literally brush my teeth. And I always use Crest. Bro, my mom knows what's up. Summer Friday's jet lag mask. I think I'm gonna put this on. What I love about this mask is you don't have to wash it off. You can if you want, but it really is just like a really intense like moisturizer and it hits. I'm obsessed with Summer Fridays. Also, my mom knows what's up. This Laneige lip, lip mask, it's so different. This is the only good thing about parents being divorced is that I can come shopping in my mom's bathroom and closet. Just divorce kid things. If you know, you know. Honestly, if your parents are divorced though, thinking of you during the holiday season, because it's hard. It's working hard for everyone, regardless of your situation. Thinking of you, love you. All right, y'all, we are editing and eating my mom's, what is this, lasagna soup? Okay, it's Debbie's lasagna soup. <laughs> Period, it looks great. You guys, this is my bedroom at my mom's. I've literally never shown this because I'm never in it <laughs> and I never really stay here, I think I've only slept here like dead ass mm, three times, like overnight once maybe. Like to be honest, when I normally stay the night here, I'll just sleep in my mom's bed because it's so big and then she has this amazing like foam mattress thing over the mattress so I just, it's so comfy. But yeah, this is my room at my mom's. <laughs> And it's really cute. She decorated it and got like, you know, this cute. She just is really good at like decorating and making things cute and feel homey. She's really good at like hanging up pictures to like just make it feel like a home. And you know, there's these ones up here, which now that I think about is that's kind of weird that there's like photos of myself. I I guess prefer ones, but I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I definitely don't want to sound ungrateful or anything. Like it's an awesome room. I just, I, I'm never here really to use it, unfortunately. You know, when she has guests and stuff, they'll like stay in here too. My brother has a room downstairs, mine is upstairs. And then also my mom will print like a collage of all the Instagram photos that I posted over the year, which is kind of cool because it just like shows how much happened. This is like when I was 23. I need to get one for when I turn 24. I don't even know like what my setup is filming here. So we're gonna try tissue boxes. I'm like, is this good? Let me shut this door. This makes me sad because I wish I would have actually uploaded videos that I filmed when I was in high school, but I was too insecure to. I'm bummed that I didn't upload because it would have been cool to like see me at that age, like in my old room. Um, anyway, cause it was like way different then. So I wanted to do a little Q and A type thing because I feel like I didn't get much content today because I was sleeping like the whole day. It's literally 11.42, but Midwest time, which really means that it is nine. <laughs> 42 back home, so I'm not tired at all. 
Sorry, I really needed to wipe the lens. Julia gave me the idea of answering some we're not really strangers questions. I actually have the game at home. I think I received it as a gift and I still have yet to play it, but I really want to play it because I love card games. But she sent me a bunch of like good ones and I don't know, I feel like this vlogmas you guys keep commenting. They're like, whoa, like I love when you daily vlog because I feel like we really get to know you and when you're like vulnerable about topics, like you're being so real, blah, blah, blah. I, I love that so much and like I never really hold back much when I'm on camera, which is weird. Like, I feel like most people, the camera freaks them out with me. It's like, it, it's therapeutic. But I don't, I don't know. I think I'm a little confusing to like people that I won't, don't watch me regularly, like you guys, which I'm so grateful for. Thank you. Shout out you. But I wanted to do a little like deeper Q&A. Yeah, we'll see if you guys like this kind of stuff. I don't do like Q and A's ever, but I love when other creators do them. Okay, first question. Who do I feel most myself around and why? Wow, that's just a great question. Okay, well one, I immediately thought of my family, like my brother, my mom, and my dad, just because, duh, like we're so open with each other and they know me like probably better than anyone else. But then like the people I feel the, my most myself around is genuinely like Alicia and Ashley. Like, obviously, my other friends, like, in that group, like, Taryn, Ollie, Remy, I'm probably forgetting a gazillion people. I mean, the thing is, is, like, with all my friends, I feel very comfortable around. Like, I wouldn't hang out with them if I didn't. But out of all of them, I think definitely Alicia and Ashley. Like, I have never felt so seen in my life by a friend more than them. I just feel like they're, like, my older sisters. Like, I feel like we're related. Dead ass. Like... I, I feel like I can be super crazy and ridiculous and insane and they get me, but also I can be like down bad and sad and upset and like they also get me. And we just like are so similar. Like the things that they would get upset about, I would get upset about. Or the things that they would really appreciate, I would appreciate. Just like, I, I don't know if it was the way we were raised or just how we are genetically, but like we are so similar that it's just like I get them and I feel like they get me. And I'm just so grateful to have them because like, there's no way I would still be living in LA without them. Like regardless of my job and working for Alicia, like my friendship and my relationship with her and Ashley, they're literally like my siblings at this point. I would say just them. And I know that's like probably gonna sound cliche, but it's dead ass. What have you been taking for granted lately? Oh my God. I, I immediately thought of Julia. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe like, my job, I don't know. I like, I don't take it for granted, but also like, I think with, even with Julia, like Julia's my editor. She's also my really good friend, but like having someone there to edit my videos and like someone who's reliable, someone who I can trust, someone who I know will impress me is so forking hard to find. And I'm just so grateful for her. <laughs> She's like editing this right now, like dead ass. Like every day I'm just like, hee hee, I'm gonna send my footage and I like, I have to like pinch myself like I, I'm so grateful that I have someone to trust you know I can even trust her like she knows like what angles I would like and what I would want left in or what like she's very real with me like TK this didn't make sense you're gonna need to refilm it and like things like that she's just so real and I like I'm so grateful for that and I feel like I understand why Alicia says those things about me now I used to be like oh my god you're so silly like you don't need to say that blah 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 and now I'm like no I get it because like I'm so grateful for Julia and um I don't know. It's just, it's funny how like the pyramid of our YouTube editor world works. But yeah, I'm very grateful for her and I'm very grateful for just my job. Like the fact that I can do this and make money and it's like my dream. Like I was up till midnight. It's midnight right now and I'm like filming and I'm just so excited and grateful and like happy to be doing that. And I was like editing all night, but like my mom, while my mom was cooking and I was like, I, I couldn't even think about complaining once because I was just like, and granted there are like tough times or like, you know, days where I'm like not in the mood, but like how forking cool is that, that I'm like so excited to edit my video and like get it up even when I'm like tired of shit. And I've just never felt that way about anything. You know when you like first start liking a guy and you'll like stay up extra late to see if they like text you back? So you're like on a roll, you're like up till 3 a.m. and you like have a 7 a.m. practice or something. Like that's how I feel with like YouTube and like this career. Like I've never felt more seen or just like, I just feel like I'm in the right spot. Like I was like a puzzle piece trying to find the right puzzle to be in. Like I finally fit in. 
I don't know if that was a good analogy. I feel like I take just my job like for granted sometimes like, oh my God, I can't believe I get to wake up and do this. And then especially Julia, like, holy shit. God bless that girl. But Julia's gonna be like, oh my God. <laughs> But like dead ass, that's what I was thinking of. Her. What title would you give this chapter in your life? Gosh, these are good questions. I should make like polls out of these. Ooh, um, sorry, my card ran out of space. I think definitely something with career. I feel like it's the beginning of like my actual career. So something with like the best is yet to come. That's kind of a good title. I'm like really, really, really focused right now. I've never felt more connected to like my YouTube channel and doing this whole influencer thing and like finding my like personal brand and like I've never felt more comfortable in front of the camera. So I don't know. I just think like something with like the, this is just the beginning. The best is yet to come. What is something like that? Like I feel like I'm such a baby in the YouTube space that's that's how I feel I want the title to be like I mean just the beginning maybe that could be the title this is not the end it's only the beginning of something great next one how are you really I feel like I am so good mentally finally I was like seeking balance with like time management and my like two jobs so much like I was like it was getting bad and I finally had a really good like deep talk with Alicia I like took her out to like a business dinner and just like told her everything that I was concerned about or I wanted to do better a better job of and we like figured it out a really good schedule and it brought me so much peace and I think like so much of our negative thoughts are rooted from lack of communication and lack of like speaking up, at least with me. You would think I'd, I'm, I'm pretty like vocal and confrontational when like something doesn't make me happy or vice versa. Like I'm, I'm such a words of affirmation person. Like I definitely speak my mind, but sometimes I do like kind of shove things under the rug, even though I know it bothers me and it's small, but like I don't see it being big enough to be brought up, which I feel like is sometimes a weakness because even though it is small and it might seem nitpicky at the time, like those things add up and then one day you'll like will blow up. So I feel like I had been nitpicking like little things about my head being everywhere. And you know, I feel like I wasn't giving 110% to either of my personal life, my main full-time job, and then also like my fun influencer, like side hustle type thing. And I was just so scatterbrained. So I finally like brought up my concerns to Alicia and she's like the best boss ever. Like she totally understood and agreed and we figured out a good system and sometimes all you have to do is just communicate and just express how you're feeling or your concerns and communication is such an underrated skill that was a long-winded answer but I'm feeling really great and relieved right now is there anyone who's changed your life but doesn't know it oh my god hmm I feel like there's several people one, the first one I'm thinking of is the podcast guest that I just had on. It's going to be the first podcast released in 2022. So like the first week of January. I just had on Angela Arntz and she was the former CEO of Burberry and then the former vice president of retail or senior vice president of retail at Apple. And yes, of course, I was so excited about like landing such an awesome guest because of the obvious things. Like one, that's such an epic guest to land. Two, I got the opportunity to like interview her and meet her, which I was so grateful for. Three, it, you know, I feel like brings a lot of legitimacy to my podcast. I'm sure a lot of people want to watch it just because of her name, which that's just like how the world works sometimes. I can say all I want that like I don't care about that stuff, but that's, that does help me. And I think one of my big biggest goals career wise is to like I want my podcast to be at the level where my dream guests are almost dare I say honored that I asked to have them on like I want to be that bitch in the podcasting world like known as a really good interviewer and I, I want to practice and get better and all of that to say is that I don't think she realizes how much her coming on my podcast can help me land some of my dream guests which can help me land the next dream guest. I mean, amongst all the other things that I learned in our interview that I was just like blown away from and even like before and after the podcast, our little chit chat, I just like cherish her knowledge and wisdom so much. Definitely Angela. 
I mean, even like my manager, which I don't know if she knows it or not, but I'm just, let's just assume she doesn't. I feel like I don't like tell her how grateful I am for her enough. I mean, there's like multiple good people on the team, but like, I'm so bloody grateful to have a management team. Like they literally have changed my life financially like crazy, like just to be straight up, like they are the only reason I can even apply somewhat confidently for the apartment I just got approved for. Like they're the only reason I got approved is just because the deals they bring me more than the finance stability that they bring me, but the encouragement they bring me as just being a cheerleader and believing in me and, and like supporting me being a creator and like, you know, believing that I have room to grow and they see a future for me and all of those things is like what I'm mostly grateful for just because nothing feels better than knowing you have people rooting for you. I'm trying to think like right at the moment. I didn't think about these before. These are the first time I'm seeing these questions. Think of someone you admire. Why did this person come to mind? I mean, I immediately thought of Angela again, mainly because the humility that Angela has at her level, like I deal with so many crazy, like clout demon, I'm better than you. Who are you? How many numbers do you have? Like type of people in LA, just like, it's just inevitable. Like I feel like anywhere you deal with that, but like, especially in certain circles in LA, you deal with that all the time. And like people that just make you feel like shit. And out of all the people in the world that could make you feel like shit and have a reason to, I'm like someone like Angela at her level of w with what she has achieved or, you know, someone like, I don't know why I'm thinking of like Sandra Bullock or Will Ferrell, people like that. Like, I'm like, be mean to me. <laughs> like you, out of all people in the world, you, you have the right to be mean to me. But it's always those people that are like the nicest, most down to earth, most humble, like beautiful souls. And that's like why they are where they are. She just radiates elegance and shows so much gratitude for like the way she was raised. And like, I know not everyone is as blessed as some and, you know, and like, they have their certain reasons whether or not close with their family or whatever the case is like disclaimer i know that but i admire when someone at such a high profile they don't let titles and numbers and things like that define them and i just hope that i can be like half the person she is one day i admire the crap out of her and reese witherspoon <laughs> what is your most toxic trait you can admit to i feel like going circling back Freaking, I'm using business lingo. To the, I sometimes am like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. Even though that bothered me, I like shove things under the rug until it eventually makes me like blow up. That's definitely a toxic trait of mine. Honestly, my toxic trait is like, one, FaceTiming men when I'm drunk and two, like always having a hometown fling. Like I need to get over that phase in my life. Like Taylor, I just feel like that chapter needs to end soon. <laughs> Maybe I already did, but like that is my toxic trait. Like I'm like Midwest men, like Indiana men, like stop. I feel like I like blame the city a lot with when it comes to dating with LA and I'm like sick and tired of doing that. What's been keeping you sane lately? Julia, <laughs> my editor. I think also you guys, like with Vlogmas, like you guys, your words of encouragement in the comments and like making me feel normal for like things I'll just talk about when I like get really real. I don't know. I think like with my moving stress, you guys have made me feel awesome, insane. Yeah. And, and my friends like who are also doing vlogmas, I feel like they know better than anyone like what, it, what exactly I'm feeling or going through and whatever. And we all like kind of, you know, have group chats and send words of encouragement. Like they keep me sane. What would your younger self not believe about your life today? It's hard because like, I wanna be like living in the apartment I live in, or, like having the job I have, which like, yes, but also at the same time, or like living in LA even, I'm like, that's forking crazy. But at the same time, I like deep down knew that I needed to be doing something and I would be doing something like I'm doing. Like, I don't wanna say that's, I didn't believe that because I did, but also it's like, I also can't believe that it actually happened. Or even that people actually watch my videos. For so long, I would just post videos and no one watched. I, oh, you know what I can't fucking believe? I can't fucking believe that I get paid by like my videos, I get paid when I upload them. That is a mind boggling. That's such a mind fork. Even with my podcast, I still have yet to get paid, but I'm like, one day I will. And that's forking insane because I did this for years, never getting paid. So that's just crazy. What song feels like falling in love for the first time? 
Oh my god. Um, September by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Tiny Dancer, Elton John. Don't Go Breaking My Heart, Elton John. Nothing Like You, Dan and Shay. Freaking Your Body is a Wonderland, John Mayer. My main character playlist on Spotify. Loving is easy. You have me fucked up. Midnight City, M83, such a good forking song. I know I'm in love when blank. I feel like when I get forking like butterflies and nervous, like someone that really makes me excited nervous, not legit nervous because that's I feel like a little bit of red flag, but you know the like adrenaline excited butterflies, like someone that makes me want to like actually take time to get ready and like I, I want to impress, that's how I know. Or like when I stay up late to text them, like doing things that like kind of affect my routine. That's how I know I'm like smitten for someone because I'm so strict about, you know, like just getting my shit done and if I let like things slide, that's when you know I'm like smitten. I'm like, what's going on? Wow, this is so great. Whose name are you looking for in your Insta story views? I'm definitely not saying that on the internet. Fork, I know exactly who it is though. There's like a few, they're all men. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today's vlog be sure to follow my making moves podcast channel it is just making moves pod um i will link it below and i just came out with a podcast with fibula connor wood he's so funny and awesome and i just adore him and i had one come out with alexa losi i forking love her so definitely go check those out play it in the background when you know you're cleaning your house before guests come over whatever the whole shindig and yeah, subscribe to this channel, like, comment down below your favorite card game, and be sure to make someone stay this week. Peace!